That's my evidence from Adam Cameron from middle school. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that so neat? Hello. Hello. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Alan Lampert. I'm the director here at Mary Mead Adult Education. And one of the new uh, features we have done uh, over this for this past semester is introduce an artist talk series. And we've had a number of local artists and other people come in and uh, have a conversation with the community about things that uh, that they are passionate about. And um, Mr. Solomon is here to have a conversation with you about some of his artwork. And we just hope you enjoy this evening and have a great time. And hopefully you've gotten our catalog and, and you're seeing other wonderful classes that we have to offer. I see one of our teachers is here in the audience, Jennifer Linsky. And uh, it's just great to have you here this evening. And we hope you have a wonderful time. So thank you for coming tonight. It's all yours. Um, how many people have made a collage in the last year? Okay. How many people have a refrigerator with pictures of your grandchildren, recipes, the list of appointments to the doctor, the bill that has to be mailed, and so on? And about once every three weeks, say, "I'm going to triage it, move it around." How many people have that refrigerator? In the last year or ever? Whatever. <laughs> okay. my, you have my regret. Right. So that's part of what we're going to talk about here. How we make these distinctions between what is art, collage making, and on the other hand, moving stuff around for visual purposes. Um, two months ago, Bill Stanton did an artist talk and his, he, he, he wonderful painter doing larger for compared to my work, larger format work and so he much of his stuff was almost life size on the machine, the machine, the screen. Jennifer two weeks ago working much smaller was showing her 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 work. I'm going to sort of fall in the middle. And it raised an issue for me also of why it is that I have been doing stuff of this relative size, and it finally took doing a, a, a presentation like this for me to see the obvious answer, I think obvious answer. So, in any case, um, collage. Um, some of the artists that have done collage that we often don't think about, you think about Picasso, one of the ways in which he broke through into real prominence in the early teens of the 20th century was in terms of using collage materials. Collage simply is a French word related to glue, using glue to affix something. Collé. Collé is the word. And so some of his paintings from uh, 1910, 12, 14, he starts to integrate and, and, and shocking a lot of painters. My goodness, what is that stuff doing on the campus? On the campus? Freudian slip. I spent my life teaching. What is that stuff doing on the canvas? Ditto with people like Rock. Matisse, famous story of when he lost as much dexterity with his hands holding a brush and so on. He started scissoring. Um, Robert Rauschenberg. David Driscoll. How many people saw the um, the, light, the, the show that just ended last week at the uh, Brunswick, at the Bowdoin College of Art Museum. Anybody, did you see that? Driscoll's work, he had a piece in the last room based on the Malaga Island history. And embedded in that piece are several photographs from 1910, 1911. So artists have been doing this for, in the whole sweep of art, not for a terribly long time, but in terms of our lifetimes, quite a while. Um, and it raises then the next issue here. Eric Carle, the artist who did The Very Hungry Caterpillar, 50 million copies of it out there, used collage. And then, and then we have, we don't know who she is. I don't know who she is. Nameless woman, African-American woman, is this art? 
or is this just making quilts? It raises those issues. I think that's one of the reasons why, for me, collage is such a fascinating thing. How do we create categories? How do we create language which represents what is legit, illegit, what's in, what's out, what's hip, what's not hip, etc.? What's art? What's art? And what's not art? On the right, well, on the left, is an image from Pompeii, museum in Rome, of a mosaic, classical themes and so on. And on the other side, probably the most regularly reproduced image in Western culture made out of jelly beans. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole thing. I went online for that. I just tripped over this one. There's a whole sub subworld of jelly beans. Now, how many people in second or third grade, or as teachers second or third grade, did the mosaics with macaroni, beans, etc.? We've all. So it raises the issue. What's art? What's not art? What's craft? What's not craft? What's the relationship between things like sculpture, painting, then we look into the subset of painting, the difference between oil painting and acrylic and watercolor and drawing. I mean, those kinds of, in the history of Western art, it, this, this, con this conversation about collage, I think, is part of a larger conversation about how do we establish boundaries, territories of, 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 of status, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what's important to me in terms of, of, of my history? I spent 45 years of my life in uh, teaching history in college, uh, mainly the history of, of Western of European history, 16th, 17th, 18th centuries. My particular fields were in uh, popular culture. Not, was not what was happening in the academies and so on, but instead what was happening not in the academies. Not, not about Diderot and Montesquieu and Voltaire and the fabulous things that they wrote, but instead how did the printing press work and how did that help prep pass those ideas from one village to the next to the next? And so, my history of doing art is that I did none of it as an adult. I did, did a couple courses in college, uh, and then did not do art until 2007, 2008. I had retired from full-time teaching. Uh, I was at Tufts University for 35, 33 terrific years. I was then doing adjunct work at USM, helping put together what has become the LGBT archives of Maine. I was doing a lot of work around the state. Collecting junk, ephemera, i.e. the letters, the posters, the t-shirts of women and men who had fought for civil rights in Maine silently. The word that archivists use to describe that stuff as opposed to a $200 book or a $5,000 painting is ephemeral. That's a, that's a word that archivists use, librarians use, ephemeral. It's all that paper junk. Well, we're, if we don't save it, the history's gone. So part of what I love about collage is in the sense that that act of saving, of, of, of seeing value in what otherwise is classified as junk, throwaway, et cetera, et cetera. My partner, my now husband, spent, he's from New Orleans, which is the collage capital of the universe in terms of mixtures <laughs> and things on top of each other. Uh, we spent the winter, uh, three winters, in, 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 um, in New Orleans. And I thought, oh, uh, I'm, I'm not a Mainer, but I'm from the north. And, oh, God, New Orleans, how am I going to handle the weather? And then after a few days, et cetera, et cetera, I went to the art museum. And it's a nice art museum. Then I walked into the room. There is a room four times the size of this room, jet dark black. And all the way around the room are Joseph Cornell's. Oh, wow. Each of them with a spot on it like, like a diamond in a jewelry spot. Just spectacular. Well, I was home because I had enjoyed his work before, but there it was. 
I was unable in New Orleans to do the found object sculpture that I was doing in Maine because all I had to deal with, all I did deal with, all I had to work with was this size of the kitchen table when my husband wasn't cooking, which he does all the time. And so I began to do collage. So you two didn't work that out? Like no, no, we're still yeah. working on it. <laughs> um, so Cornell is really important to me and the history of collage. It raises that issue. Is collage only paper on paper, paper on some kind of surface? Or is it assemblage, assemblage, found object sculpture? It, here we go with those categories. Is it, in the case of, for example, Hannah Hoch, who's one of the real founders of modern collage as an art form, doesn't get the attention that those other guys get. She was a member of the Dada movement in, in, in Europe, not taken terribly seriously because she was a woman. She was a photo, she was doing photo montage, she helped create that word. She was working, <laughs> taking photographs and, and applying them on canvas, et cetera, et cetera, with a lot of clippings and so on. And also she, unlike many other artists who who were involved politically through their art in critique of the Weimar and early Nazi period, she was much more explicit about it. And in perhaps her most famous work, which has the, the, the really singing title of Cut with the Dada Kitchen Knife Through the Last Weimar Beer Belly Cultural Epoch in Germany. <laughs> this is a large piece, and she's got images of the regime, images of technology, images of really getting the zeitgeist, really getting what is in the air in Germany in the 1920s and 30s. Um, and as I say, she may well have invented the term photo montage, which is still another kind of, of collage activity. Was, was that Cornell Beach three-dimensional? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me... Uh, I, I'm sorry, but I, I kept looking at it and thinking, there's something going on with this piece. It is indeed, yes, thank you for, thank you for asking, yeah. It is indeed three-dimensional. And many of his pieces, well, they were all three-dimensional, all. I think they were all three-dimensional, and he often used this technique of creating a shadow box, although he wouldn't call it that. He lived in New York City, he lived on, in Queens on Utopia Parkway, which is a great place for it a mad artist to live on. He worked in Manhattan in a textile company, and he was an inveterate collector of stuff. He kept, he, and he loved to go to the theater and the ballet, so he kept every, every program he could find, every ticket, etc. and it shows up in his art. And so here's somebody, again, who's breaking boundaries, who's using collage, and in a more sculptural sort of way. And so when I started doing three-dimensional work, this is the second piece I did, there is collage here. There, this is paper that's attached, it's glued around the outside, and in the inside is a, um, a reproduction of a 1910 Sears catalog advertisement for uh, pocket watches. Um, but the collage doesn't have to be two-dimensional. That's correct. Okay. Even though you in very some of this based on, mm -hmm. if I look at it literally, glue, you glued the paper onto the box. Yeah. Okay. My sister and I gave her, I gave her one of my pieces for the holidays a couple of years ago. She keeps it and said, I really love your painting. It's not a painting. I know, I, I, but I really love your painting. It's my favorite <laughs> painting. And so I've given up, I've given up on that thing. Collage, collage is, 95% of the people, I made that number up, 95% of the people who use the term collage in the art world are usually referring to a two-dimensional thing they like. So is that fair, Jennifer, the 96.3? <laughs> um, and other people will classify it as, okay, there's collage, which is two-dimensional. There's photo, photo uh, um, 
what was the word I had it a few minutes ago? Photomontage. Photomontage, which is primarily using photographs and doing much the same thing. There's assemblage, assemblage if it's an expensive piece, or otherwise assemblage, which is using stuff like that, three-dimensional stuff. Um, the way I came to uh, doing this work, uh, as I said, this was one of my first pieces, is that in 2007, 2008, I had been working on the archives for about six or seven years, and the steam was, the juices weren't running quite so much. And I was beginning to think, what, what's next? Seven year itch. And I started having dreams. Uh, and I had dreams for three weeks about essentially moving on from being a professor. I woke up that morning, made arrangements to get rid of 95% of my library, about 1,500 books. And I started doing three-dimensional art. I don't know where the hell it came from, but I just started doing it. Uh, and this was about the second or third piece that I did. Uh, those of us, one of the secrets for people doing three-dimensional art, we live in Bodenham, and we have a really juicy recycling program. <laughs> and when the word got out that I was doing this, by about the second or third year I was doing it, some of my friends, some of my neighbors, on the way to the recycling barn, would stop, sometimes without invitation, uh, leaving stuff. It's great. I had a lot of, a lot of community support. Question. Uh, yes. Where does decoupage come into this? Is that all? That's a, yeah, excellent. Decoupage, which means you know, cutting and, and then of course applying on a surface, is an old is an older technique. A technique I think we see it as early as the 17th, early 18th, eight, the 18th century, the 1700s, early 1800s. It is much more of a decorative process, it seems to me, mosaic-like, but it's much more, I think, for embellishing pieces of furniture, et cetera, et cetera, rather than standing separate from it as a piece. But it's, again, it's the, these, does that, does that make sense? Oh, sure. No, I mean, that's what I, I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, am I going backwards? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next couple pieces I made were a little bit larger. And also I start seeing, showing up in these things, I was raised Jewish. For a while there, I took a year of sabbatical to think about becoming a rabbi. I went to Israel. Uh, I just finished a course on the history of anti-Semitism through the Merrimain Art Center. It's great. It, and, the, and, and Christian forms started showing up in my work. Um, which I found very interesting. Part of why we do art is we discover things about ourselves in terms of classic images of uh, the saved and the damned. Uh, crucifixion. I, I did this piece and I never noticed. I worked at it for weeks along with several other pieces. It was only when I put it up on, the wall, on a shelf at a show that I looked up and I saw what seemed to me to be a sort of an anthropomorphic figure oh, yeah. reaching out. Um, so a lot of my stuff uh, deals with issues of spirituality, um, some Christian themes, some Jewish themes, I'll point those out a little bit uh, further as, as we go. Um, and then the piece has got even larger. It's Gainsborough's Blue Boy. I mean, ephemera, throw away, junk. This kind of stuff. You know, uh, I, for a while there, I was at every flea market and yard sale uh, in, in Midcoast, Maine, uh, buying this stuff, retrieving this stuff. I often pull up and I say, uh, here's some beautiful stuff, and I said, no, I'm looking for stuff that's broken, rusted. Um, and then this piece got larger. It's about this big. I call this faster, uh, yeah, faster, quicker, 
more, etc. And it's, it's kinetic. Uh, you walk into the room, I live in a 200 year old house, you walk into the room, and this. <laughs> Do you remember, those of us of a certain age, remember that? That's also part of the trip here. You know, it's going back to my childhood, you know, from waffle iron, a, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then even larger, this guy here, uh, which is about this large. These are automotive parts down here. This is the guts of a, um, of a saxophone. Uh, these are uh, uh, lenses from an optician up here, if you can see those guys around here. This was simply a piece of found uh, uh, stick in the backyard that I was going to use for kindling. Um, this guy is even larger. This is this an auto harp. Uh, I had this up at uh, a show at... Um, um, how well, what's the name of the gallery that just closed? Okay. Harlem. 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 Yeah. Harlem. Uh, and then this is the last piece that I did, three-dimensional. This was soon after the election of 2016. I call it False Gods, Fake News. Uh, and it's like that and like that. These figures are, the bodies are M&M &M figures, you know, the little M&M guys, kind of like this. And the, the heads are um, from the bodies of some of these animals, and I changed them, turned them into monsters, um, et cetera, et cetera. Can I ask a question? Please. Do you, do you start with a theme? Seldom. You'll, and I'll, I'll be, thank you. I'll, I'll hopefully demonstrate that in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, part of having a conversation before with Bill about what's really been interesting to me in terms of what progress am I making? Am I getting better at what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera? Part of it is trusting more and more the intuition, silencing the trying to hear only two words, yes or no about if something works, it works, if it doesn't work, I'll, I may analyze it later, but it's, I'm getting better, I'm getting better, better at that. Um, and, and, and what I'll also try to show, this was obviously, this was right in front of me, the election of 2016, fake Bible, false gods, fake news. And so a lot of my work is, in, is, is political, is, based upon what's going through the zeitgeist in my head right, right now. Um, I would never call myself a political artist. Yes, yeah. Now, are you using uh, glue, or are you welding, or how are you? I'm not welding um, I'm, I'm in these guys in past tense, because I'm not, I'm really not doing three-dimensional anymore. So, Anyway, I'm not, at the present time, I'm not doing three-dimensional. I was using um, um, high-quality glues. Yeah. No welding, nothing where I could hurt myself. Part of why I moved on from it was not only because of discovering in New Orleans with a smaller workplace I could do, for me, really exciting work, it was also I was beginning to get some carpal tunnel stuff. The scissors worked fine. But the screwing and the pushing and the pulling, and the house was beginning to look like my friends were threatening an intervention, <laughs> um, et cetera, et cetera. And so here's some of the pieces that I was doing then. Uh, part of what I was looking for in terms of a challenge was somebody, I tried to describe it to a writer friend of mine of how I moved on from the piece like the, the, the that uh, fake odds, false gods, fake news. I said, what I love about this is when it's working, it's a difference between writing a novel, I've never written a novel, but I could imagine, writing a book and writing a haiku or doing a short poem. 
And so in this one, there's only four pieces here. There's the snake, five pieces. Yep. The snake, the this, the apple, and the two hands. Um, yes, Bill. Uh, of all the pieces you've shown, this, this one really gets to me. I really like this. I mean, the others, this one really, there's something about this that really appeals to me. Thank you. I don't know why. Now, is this one 3D or is this That's 2D. 2D, okay. From now on, it's all 2D. I was wondering where you got the um, So what was going through your mind in this? I, I, don't, I don't recall. I mean, here's, there are, certain, there are certain things that show up repeatedly here that are obviously going through my mind at various times. Clocks show up an awful lot in my life. And for many of us in this room of a certain age, it, yeah. clocks are whether we like it there. So clocks show up repeatedly. It's also the historian in me, fair enough. It's also the guy who I am today. Okay, so there's that piece. The big, the big Secondly, is yeah. that a compass? It's a compass, yeah. But there, there, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's a compass. You're right. The, Bill? The thing that this piece has, so in my mind, the negative space is just terrific. Huh. Let's not the objects, but the, the space is interesting. <coughs> it accentuates the movement of the snake. It's so good. artistic to think about the edges. Oh, space. yeah, there's the snake and the apple. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, it's Genesis 101. <laughs> um, Lucien Freud, the portraitist. I read a, 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 a biography, interviews, and he says, and of course he's doing portraits, which I, well, some here like to call portraits. He says, I try, to, I have to get a little bit of poison in every portrait I did. If you know Lucien Freud, you don't appreciate that. And there's, there's whether it's the trickster in me or what, whatever it is, you'll, you'll, perhaps you'll see that in some of the other work. You're right, these are, art, these are um, it's Genesis 101. Uh, it's also um, uh, archetypal images, <laughs> you know, 101, um, you'll see the, the compass, the clock, the watch showing up repeatedly more and more in the stuff. And the snake, the poison, um, this piece, uh, which was done, I doubt was done, I did it at the, about the same time. Um, a number of times I have express, ex explicitly used um, Michelangelo with the hand of God down on this side. You know, so it's like the Mona Lisa. Everybody's seen this one. And so, while it may not have been conscious on my part, that was probably working there. It's part of the curse of being an historian whose, <laughs> whose ability to organize his memories and thoughts has really gone to pot. But the stuff is still there. So where does it come from? From themes? I mean, part of it, like, for example, the piece False Gods, Fake News, I was bent out of shape about the election of 2016. And I would go into my studio, and I try not to, I may have an idea uh, which will get me started, and then I try to shut down the, well, if I, if, some, if I find myself just, you know, I'm looking at, at whatever this is, and the word um, lemon goes through my mind, boom, I go look in the drawer where I keep vegetable images or something else. I try to respond to that as much as I can. And the best pieces almost make themselves. I think that's what happened with the one that you were talking about, and this one too. And, and, and working with a minimal number of pieces, 
of cutting them out or being aware of them and let them dance on the surface until the negative space, the composition, the whatever merges. And when I'm working with it, only a few pieces like this, once I've got the pieces, I'll try to work it upside down. So that the composition of it, for me, works this way as well as that way. Oh, yeah. And, and that's, that becomes, for, particularly for these minimalist pieces, that becomes a real test for me of a test. That's a real marker for me that, that it's clicking, that it's, that it's working. So where did these images come, like magazines or books? Or? Yeah, magazines, books. Um, uh, I do not use a computer at all. I can proudly say that not a single piece of my work has come from the computer. I mean, I'm on Facebook 25 hours a day, but I have not. I don't say, okay, I need a Michelangelo, uh, a Sybil from you know that part of the Sistine Chapel, and I go. I don't do that. I, that's part of my practice. You know, it's a practice. I, I practice. I, pr I practice Tai Chi a lot, and I'm practicing art, and I'm understanding, as I never understood before, what that word practice means from a spiritual point of view. If you're doing yoga, you go sit. If you're doing Tai Chi, you stand and move. And you do it every day. You put your, you do it. You go into your studio even, every day, even though it's, nothing's happening, or apparently nothing's happening. Practice, practice. You got to make the donuts. Remember that, Kurt? <laughs> you got to make the donuts. And and the good, the, the, the powerful stuff makes itself. And when I say, I, I may start on something that happened on the news or something I had in a dream, and it starts moving around. And I heard a wonderful something. Oh, Billy. Um, Saturday morning NPR, uh, former um, um, Billy Collins. Yeah. Thank you. Did you hear that interview? Yeah. <laughs> did you? Who heard it? I did. Yeah. Wasn't that wonderful? And he was saying that about poetry. He says he starts writing a poem and then he gets out of the way because if he's if he's that's why he hates getting commissions. That you must write a poem on the death of my brother-in-law. Whatever. He hates that. Because for him, the poem, the act, the practice of being a poet is sitting down behind his typewriter and just letting the words take him. And, and when that goes, that's just so sublime. I mean, I'll be upstairs for seven hours and not even know it. And if I'm working it, that hour, if I'm really working it, right, mm, that hour just seems like an eternity. So it's... Are, are you an artist? Uh, yes. <laughs> does, that, does that does that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right answer. Does that make sense to you? It does you? make sense. Yes. Yeah. Definitely makes yeah. sense. I've been there. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, but when it does, you know, yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or this one. Uh, as I say, Tai Chi is very important to me about finding balance, finding you know a place to stand, a place to move from. And this this piece it isn't a good photograph; it's much more vivid than that. But, uh, and then finding this this advertisement from a 1938 Life magazine for built to last 100,000 miles, and there's a card going down. <laughs> And is that other, the thing, is that a hand? Yes. Is it a skeleton? Okay. Yeah. That's the poison in this piece. Mm -hmm. Or this piece here that I, that I, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Um, yeah. Being, as an historian, and, and also as an artist, artist, being part of a conversation on where does what I'm doing not fit in, but where does it show up in the history of people doing visual art? 
And so, you know, the jokes I made about uh, Mona Lisa made out of jelly beans. There is a history that's, that's working all the time. And so, about seven years ago, I did this piece. And the, the original image is from Jacques-Louis David, painting in the late 18th, 30th, 19th century. Uh, and here, here's his famous painting, The Death of Marat. Marat in the bathtub. Probably all seen it at various times. I taught the French Revolution for years and years, so this, the, so this is embedded somewhere there. It's, it, you know, it's, 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 it's there. And it's such a powerful image. I can imagine some more. How can, this is, this is, this is ever productive. It's just such a powerful image. And so I've got, I mean, these two stem from the theme, not the theme, the image, whatever, from some similar place. Um, or this case here, the birth of Venus. This is called a day, I call, I call this a, a day at the beach. <laughs> I call it Venus on the half shell. At Venus, <laughs> right, it's Venus on the half shell, right. Not yours. Right. Oh, right. Good. And then she shows up again. Oh, yeah. And there's a history with this, which I wasn't aware of until somebody asked me about it, and I became a ooh, what's this about? If you ask in terms of things, June 29, I wake up, I'm listening to the news, I hear Roe v. Wade has been overturned. And I'm trying to maintain my, I'm, I'm trying to be there, and I'm in my studio, and, and I'm, I'm just going, I'm just going, and Venus shows up. And, in, and also shows up one of Ansel Adams' classic photographs of the desert. Friend, let me just add that for a oh, moment. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. You know, that, that, that. So she shows up on my table to be clipped and brought to scale, whatever the scale was. I mean, it was the full torso when I started. I had the, the Ansel Adams background photograph, which we've all seen, or variants of it. And then I had, had done a clipping two years before from the National Geographic of street, recipe, street food in Singapore. And a guy pouring pouring chicken soup or some kind of soup into five bowls. Boom, 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 boom. And I just love the shape of it. Someone was talking about the, your eye following. I, I try. I, one of the things I look for is movement and so on. And then, and then, in my pile of stuff, were some reproductions of a mid-16th century procession, somewhere in the Germany, somewhere in eastern France. And of the image is, I'll pass it around, are two men escorting a woman. And the question that I start or the, what I was becoming aware of with this some this had, what I thought about a couple days later, this is about Roe v. Wade. So I put the thing together. Bah, 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 bah. It's it's full moon, it's full moon, it's full moon. November 8th was a full moon. Election day. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. Yes it does. <laughs> What does it mean? I don't know. It means something. And the image, I would be interested as it goes around for what your interpretation is of uh, two men and the woman that they are escorting. I wouldn't respond to that until it goes all the way around. I'd be interested to see what, what folks' reaction is. Um, 
So, all right, so there's two places where Venus on the half shell <laughs> shows up, and she'll be back. She never leaves. Michelangelo is David. You know, for all of the Mona Lisas that are, that are, that are refrigerator magnets, mm -hmm. there are that many Davids. And, of course, here he is. Oh, no, this isn't. No, this is, uh, this is the, the, wrong, the wrong David. You see, I've got it. Let me look here. David coming out of, if you can imagine, it's, it's right, it's the, uh, it's the brother piece to this one. This is the Michelangelo of the ceiling. Uh, Michelangelo's David is in another piece which has the same format, architectural uh, pieces in the back, etc., etc., etc. So it's the two of them sort of play off of each other. And they'll probably continue to continue to go on. Um, all right, these two pieces, which I which I was working on for several weeks, on and off. I try to have four or five things going at one time. Um, and uh, I literally took it, literally. Uh, an hour ago, took these out of the cellophane wrap back from the uh, the, um, the framers. So look, I'll pass these around in a minute. Uh, looking at these two, these two, originally, I started working these about five months ago. These two units were going to be part of a larger single piece, with maybe a couple more. Part of what I was, what I was looking at was not only thinking about the wonderful parades in New Orleans, of the large floats with all of that craziness going on, but also thinking of the floats that people like Albrecht Dürer uh, devised in the 16th century for the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, and that people during uh, Elizabeth the first time uh, uh, designed for these triumphs through the town, which were ways of not only propaganda, but public celebration and religion and so on and so forth, really over the top, just like New Orleans parades, over the top. And I wanted to do a whole series of over the top stuff based on or coming from the craziness that was in we all went through two, three, four, five, six months ago in terms of the nature of American culture, where the hell are we going, so on and so forth. And I came up with these two, and here's how I approached it. Or where I drew my inspiration. Focus on this piece. It's very small, I wish I had it enlarged. But what this is, is a reproduction of a 16th century engraving of Columbus's first contact with native people in the Caribbean. They're bringing gifts, they have no clothes, these guys with the cross over here and the sword here are beginning the conversation, the carousel is beginning to go in terms of this relationship. Okay, so here they are here on a horse riding backwards. Here are these guys on the other side. This figure here, Jacques-Louis David again, David's painting of Napoleon crossing the Alps. 
So this is the horse, set much more like a merry-go-round horse. These legs here are from the anatomical drawings of George Stubbs, the 18th century master painter of horses. This is of a bird. Uh, these figures down here, this woman, these, one of the pass these around, yeah, one from either side. Those figures in the bottom are from the great encyclopedia uh, of Dido O, which was published in the 18th century, which was one of the masterpieces of the history of printing and intellectual history, multi-volumes, put together in the 1760s and 70s. Not only was it a sort of an encyclopedia of all of the natural and physical and mathematic sciences, but politically it was also a way in which intellectuals of the period undermined the authority of a monarchy, the church, etc. And again, it's buried up here from all those years of teaching. So that these figures, this woman, these guys here, are from that period. And here's still, you know, went into Mount Howard, put in a clock. Uh, she uh, is from a 1928 bathing suit advertisement in uh, Ladies Home Companion. Uh, these two figures over here are from uh, a boy's novel circa 1920-21. I think it was called Boys Along the Kennebec, something like that. Uh, and the background, the background, uh, I found at the Recycling Barn about five years ago. These are blueprints from some architect who was, who, whose office was somewhere in Georgia designing McMansions. And so that's where it all came together. That's also where, you know, whether I like it or not, <laughs> this stuff is embedded in my, in my memory and in it. It comes out. Um, what else? Okay, if not now, when? Uh, some of you may, be attract, may have been attracted to this talk because this was the image that was used in the brochure. And I've got a, um, here it is here. Pass that around. Uh, I did this in January. Um, and I call it Sins, Sins of the Fathers, which is the passage from, from Exodus about, you know, if you people don't get your act together, the screw-ups that you're doing today will redound to the second and third and the fourth generation. And I did this. I showed it to a couple of friends. I didn't want to show it publicly because part of what it brought up for me was the whole issue of what right do I as a white guy, white artist, using images and subject matter, which is among other things, among other things, about racism. And I shared this with a few friends, and uh, they persuaded me. It didn't take a hell of a lot, but it's what the friends are for. So I put this up, put this up. I mean, this is an interesting, this can be an interesting conversation of where and how do we censor what we feel in our gut and what we also, as artists, know to be true. I mean, I don't, I, I can't, I'm, this piece to me speaks truth. I mean, I can't be good about this piece. Um, anybody have any thoughts about this or questions or about the whole issue of, you know, my privilege as a white artist in 
and showing this publicly and talking about it. Is that, uh, anybody have any thoughts about that? I see the, the, the prayer in the back for, for salvation there, where the hands are together. Um, I don't know if that's a hand. That's a piece, that's a huge piece of it, yeah. I, it emanates, uh, you said January, so I thought it's going to be, you know, it was the long January. Yeah, January 6th. That's what brings it to my mind. That was certainly at work as well. Yeah. I mean, and it was, you know what, it was right after, Fran, thank you for, for the prompt, right after the shootings in Uvalde, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Right after the shootings in Uvalde, Texas. But it shows um, compassion for others, and I think that it's perfectly appropriate for The, the little boy, I clipped out of the National Geographic about eight years ago. I mean, and I found that such a powerful image. I, I didn't know, but I put it away. I, and as I started doing that, he, they all sort of showed up at the same time. And there's another piece. Again, you don't need to know this, but I know this. And I don't know. This is an illustration from a, a, re, a, a modernized illustration from an 1870 edition of Uncle Tom's Cabin. That's the slave master, Simon Gray. Oh, wow. And the clocks. To me, the, the whip, which I now understand, yes, yeah. brings up the snake for me. Mm, 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 mm. But this, the butterflies seem to come up a lot. Is there? I guess redemption, rebirth, you're often pity. I mean, from a, purely, from a formalistic point of view, the yeah. color and so on is. Yeah. And it's that issue that when we think of butterflies, we think of something escaping and yeah. so on. Yeah. If you love something, set them free. Yeah. <laughs> the two parts that struck me are the man, the, the red is, is mm -hmm. the color, the color stands out in his hat, and, and, so, and then the hands are not, not colored at all. Yeah. And it, uh, it, it's, a, it's this, the spiritual versus the maybe corporeal side of us as humans. It certainly is, you know. Uh, between the two and uh, hopefully we get we'll, we go for more of the, the the God or whatever versus the the human side of such can be so cruel and uh, without you know, even like an animal that I see those two there that are pushed juxtaposed Trying to, and we're trying to decide who we are. We, we don't know which, which one do we switch between? I mean, I, I don't, I don't personally think it's. It seems like too much of a, uh, or a person to think that they're all spiritual and not the other. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think it's wrong. I don't think you're acknowledging who you are, which is a, a person either. But our capability of what we can do, all the things we can do, versus the, the desire not to do that. I mean, part of what this raises is this stuff stands or falls on uh, the all of our stuff, I presume, I hope, standing and falls on the response of someone who carries with her or him whatever they're carrying. And once we do the piece and it is up on the wall or online, it's no longer ours. You know, uh, people see in these things what they see in these things, and it's it's very humbling and also sort of scary when you realize that people can and must do that in a certain way. When I put up the, the thing about you know and 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 well, what now when I'm, I'm not going to show all of these, but I 
my early fascist period. I would think that Brett Sautau would, he would, that would be, Brett, you'd respond to that, I would think. Uh, you know, Brett was a uh, medic in the Vietnam War, and, and he had, I mean, I've heard that you've seen some pretty awful things and, and about life and death, and I would think that, that that's, that's kind of what get you feeling those ways to bring back some of those memories you have. I don't know, uh, but sometimes. Well, at war, you were right in combat, picking up these soldiers that were that were, in were, were, were injured or in, in, dropping your helicopter right into the fight and watching some of, some of your, I know you had to watch another helicopter be shot down. Yeah. I mean, that seems, <laughs> that seems, it's in there. Things but, that, and you've got to know, you've seen, you've seen all the bad stuff and you've seen, you know, the good stuff. I don't it's know. in one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's some other happy uh, pieces. I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful at dinner parties, folks. If you want to dinner, I'm going to all laughs. Um, you know, what's in the air for me? What's, in my, what's going on? Uh, this is also in the back in terms of uh, various surfaces that one can use. This is an old book cover, and, and it's, I call it, uh, And the Angels Sing. You know, there's the snake, and the angels are from a 16th century Italian Renaissance, probably ceiling or painting, you know, cue the beauty, here they come. And there's members of the Politburo in the Soviet Union. Oh. Here's uh, this one I call uh, Framing. Uh, it is the National Geographic from 50 years ago. And the figures at the, the, figures at the bottom for me are, well, they're from a circa 1951-52 advertisement when, again, Joe McCarthy was very powerful. What else is up for me? Here's, uh, we're going to end in a couple of minutes, folks. I appreciate your, your patience and attention. This one, uh, the title of it, I think, is April 14, 2020. I can't, re I can't remember what was happening on April 14, 2020 right now. The people were waiting in line in the United States. And I wasn't sure what was happening to our to the stability of our and I have two of these. One one is uh, friends of mine have it. Again, this, this if these things don't work from the point of view of composition balance, color, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it doesn't matter what, what's in there. And then this piece. One, two, three. There are only four cuts here. This was soon after Black Lives Matter, and it was right at the beginning of COVID. Hopefully it also works, at least in terms of the uh, spatial. This was one of those old marble pages in the book. You just blew my cover. That's what. <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah. Yes. Did other folks see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. The gun and the child's hand. Child's hand. Yeah. Okay, a couple more. Let me end up here. I said up, you know, a moment ago, if not now, when? Um, you know, for me, not only as uh, an artist, but also as, as a Jew, as a 
as a citizen, as a gay man, as an act, you know, all the stuff that I carry with me. Um, and my movement away from Judaism and dancing around it and so on and so forth and all the rest of it. If I have to reduce my ethics down to a bumper sticker, a long bumper sticker, but a bumper sticker nonetheless, it's what Rabbi Hillel said. He was a leading Jewish theologian, uh, born half a, gener uh, a generation before Jesus in Jerusalem. And he asked these, these three questions. He said, if I am not for myself, I'm past that around. I love that face. If, he, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I'm not for others, what am I? I'll ask these so that they do go in something of like an order. And then, and then the last one is, uh, this is only three pieces. The little boy, the torso of an older person, four pieces, the hand and the inevitable clock. And if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I'm not for others, what am I? And then the last one is, if not now, when? Which, you know, whether it's politics, whether it's combating anti-Semitism, which I talked about for three weeks elsewhere, or as artists, you know, if, if we're not making art right now, <laughs> what are we waiting for, you know? Um, so, anybody, any questions or other thoughts? What do you have? How much stuff do you have as a library with all the pictures? I mean, you must have. I've got a much more organized than I was when I was doing the three-dimensional stuff. I've got a space which is about 18 by 14. All of the shelves that used to be filled with books, and then for a while, for about five or six years, were filled with rusty old dolls yeah. and doll heads and all the rest, are now filled with shelves where I have pieces that I'm working on. And then I've got two rows of drawers, about 20 drawers, vegetables, men, women, children, angels, monsters, backgrounds, foregrounds, water, boom, 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 boom. And then I got a lot of books, which I, I get from the recycling barn in my town. I go to uh, book sales. You know, people, I get, I, I Friends of mine get very nervous when they see me with a $150 art book. And I can see some people, <laughs> ah, and doing the clip, yeah. To which I respond, this was in a store selling for three bucks. Or I was at the recycling barn on its way out. And so part of what animates me, maybe it may be, you know, whistling past the graveyard. But I would like to think that, you know, collage enables us to save some of these. Same thing with photographs. I've got boxes and boxes of photographs from the 19 teens, 20s, and 30s of families whom I do not know that showed up in the recycling bar in the throwaway bin. Uh, Bill, you were asking about what I'm going to be doing, what I'm doing now. And I've got some of those photographs. I'm going to be working with those photographs. So, so everything is fair game. Um, and there are, there are people doing wonderful work on computer with no cuttings. Their entire studio is it's on the computer. It's fabulous work. I don't like it because it's too slick. It's too perfect. And for me, there isn't the practice or the discipline of trying to remember where I've got that clipping, or if I don't have that right clipping, how do I alter it or to, to work as opposed to doing a search for a left-handed Italian ballet dancer who is wearing a funny hat and whose legs are zucchinis. 
you know, boom, 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 there it is, boom. And I, I, I'm also, I'm also not really, I'm, I'm not very adept with even the most simple computer stuff. So I don't do any computer work, and I see the whole issue of, of clipping old books, magazines, as not a life-giving thing, but as an okay thing. Do you use, I mean, an X-Acto knife, or, or is it always with scissors? Uh, I use scissors and an X-Acto knife. And, and tear. Uh, you know, see, occasionally there's, there's tearing. There's tearing. I like that tearing technique in that one. Yeah, yeah that guy. That, that, yes, that, that, yes, that, that, that is, yeah, I think thank it you. makes all the difference. Yeah, I think if you. that had been cut, yeah. it, it wouldn't yeah. have worked. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So, Howard. Most of these are plain backgrounds, and um, there was like one, the one with David looking through, where you use the whole paper. Yes. And really, that's the only one I see that that was like that. Was it this one here? No, it, it had two rocks with David. Oh, that's right, indeed, right. And it used the whole paper. Right. It, you don't use the whole paper, and and so many like art classes always use the whole paper. Use the whole paper. Yeah. <laughs> so I just I who just, makes I, those I, rules? I don't know. Who makes rules. Oh, the yeah. rules are fabulous to test, yeah. and then you you figure out how they work, how they don't work, and then one final one. You know, I. I, I <laughs> It's, it's, a creepy little, how a it's a little creepy. It's no, it's like, like how a jawline can bring such emotion to you. It's, it's like Mount Rushmore. Yeah. It is Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I didn't put this one online <laughs> with my address, but. Um, Oh my gosh, that's Donald Trump's yeah, chin. Right, yeah, right. That's his mouth. <laughs> and it works that way too. Yeah. It works that way too. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. You could come down with a huge picture. That is so cool. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say so yeah. one comment about how we're transitioning from 3D to 2D? <laughs> we have the best yards. <laughs> <laughs> I spent about a couple of hours in that driveway going, oh, look at this. Good job. Oh, good job. Good job. <laughs> I passed most what I didn't sell to you. I passed, I passed on to uh, a young, well, an artist considerably younger than me who, than I, who lives in, uh, in Brunswick. Uh, she blew the springs on her VW on the second trip from the house. Her VW bug was just filled with this stuff. So, I mean, the things we do for art, right? The sacrifices we make. But it, it got me away from it, and uh... if you ever made it back, you know where it is. That's right. That's right. I didn't buy that much, <laughs> but I had a great time. <laughs> See, I was, uh, I, I want to express how I, I feel after this talk of yours. And I'm, you know, I'm an artist myself. But yeah. I do landscapes primarily. Uh, Working on one now, walk along the shore every day, and uh, just one morning we got in the house, and I was just, and it was in the wintertime with the sun coming up, and this beautiful jewel like scene photographed it, and I'm making me book. But anyway, I, I'm trying to relate that kind of feeling about that art, and I'm thinking of John King's poem, Ode to a Cretan Urn, and he says, Beauty as well. We love this beauty. That's all you need to know. That's all you know on earth, and that's all you need to know. Okay. 
So you're, this is art, what you're presenting this as. But it seems so far away from my feelings of art and its relationship with beauty is expressed. And a lot, most, most art, a lot of art is, is about expressing beauty. And this isn't that way at all. And I, it, it's, I did comment on the, um, the negative space in the composition. That's, that seemed to, I don't know, it's, a, it's pretty heavy stuff. research papers for my course. And inevitably I'd get a student who would say, I want to do something no one's ever done before. I want to do something really original on the French Revolution. <clears throat> and I'd say, well, you could write the essay and not use the letter H. No one has ever done that before. <laughs> you know, new ideas, dime a dozen, right? It's about freshness. It's about for me, it's about enabling one to see something that one perhaps had not seen before. Fresh ideas as opposed to, you know. So I can imagine, and I, I, I can't think of the artist, but I remember, you know, when that, seeing, seeing a, I think, a, a, a picture of that. And then talking with someone, what's next? going to be a whole series. going to be one of chicken parts, you know, and then veal. And then lamb, etc., etc., etc. I mean, God bless artists who are trying new things that are also hopefully fresh ideas. But to do them just because it's novel, other than learning some techniques or seeing something that you're never going to do again, um, you know, Christo, the, the you know the the. Crucifix in urine. Uh, got a lot of us talking. Here's another one of, of that, of that. Having an argument, an argument, conversation with friends of mine about the activists, environmental activists, who are going to museums and gluing themselves with, 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 with on, let's say, a Van Gogh uh, a landscape. And gluing themselves there with glue that, you know, the kind of glue that's really, which means no one can remove them for four or five minutes. 
with a camera, and of course you don't need the cameras because everybody's got a selfie <laughs> taking it, and they've got and they talk for two minutes, which takes which is how long it takes for the for the guards and so on to get there about. We are not destroying this piece. It is behind glass. It is one of the great art treasures of the world. And if you are more upset about us being glued to a piece of glass in a museum, as opposed to the desecration of the earth, get a life. Wow. They're doing it all. Some people have. Wow. Yeah, it's fabulous. And the, the, the conversation that I'm having with it dear person in my life is, well, that just, that's stupid. They should be organizing. They should be doing something about the environment. I said, yes, now you and I are talking about it. It's not the same thing. They're young kids. They don't know any better. And I raised the issue about what about the Buddhist monk in Saigon in 1964 who doused himself in gasoline and lit a match. That got a lot of attention and a lot of conversation about what the hell are we doing in Vietnam. So it's, I mean, arguably, perhaps what the artist was doing is raising that issue about, I've created this piece of art out of the carcasses of 40 or 50 living beings. I mean, that might have been what she or he was, so part of what they're doing. So, so, so. What about uh, several years ago? Uh, I don't remember if it was one artist. But it, it was all, it was about human anatomy. Yeah. And they were real human bodies. Yes, um, yes body, yeah. Uh, body works. It was yeah. in Portland at the That was incredible. The yeah. new museum. Yeah. I've seen yeah. 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 my camera from that time. Yeah. Yeah. And there were some people who were just, uh, so apparently when, when this person uh, was, was having shows all over the world, yes. there were people who were outraged because they were real human bodies. And that's a desecration to human bodies. You can't do that. To which the artist answered, these people donated their bodies. So this could be done. But it was, I, I, I guess, it was just so controversial. They were, Places that wouldn't even do the show because they were getting so much flat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's getting everybody to think. Yeah. <clears throat> so are, are you suggesting that the monk emulating himself is a form of art? No, I'm saying, well, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. It's certainly a, a and I would say performance, what it, did, what it did, because it was public, like a painting. It was seen and recorded like a painting, and distributed, so there was a huge audience, and people were talking about it. Diplomats were talking about it, we were talking about it, people were talking about it. So, so uh, what I'm suggesting is that, what am I suggesting? Uh, that, that, you know, it, it was in response to your, your observation about your daughter telling you about this, this piece about I mean, one of the things that art can do, and then it's back to your piece about this stuff isn't necessarily beautiful or uplifting. It makes me think, or I can't look at it, but it's so powerful I have to look at it. You know, art can do all of that. Je Jennifer, you were gonna. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the big discussions when I was in graduate school was, does art have to be beautiful? Mm. Does it have to follow certain rules? Does it have no rules? Yeah. Is it supposed to just make you think in yeah. some way that you haven't thought before? You know, something that maybe you like it, but if you're having a reaction, yeah. if you're having some sort of response, and that's that's what it's that's what it's doing. That's the, that's starting a conversation about something that needs to it's that needs to happen or is timely. There are performance pieces that aren't meant to yeah. stay. Like um, William Smith's in the Spiral Jetty, it's ephemeral art, but he was making a comment about the environment. So art doesn't have to be anything that stays. It can be something that's completely fleeting with the tide. Yeah. It can it can change. It has to do a changing a viewpoint sometimes, or having like going into a museum and feeling uncomfortable mm -hmm. about that show. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking, oh, how do I feel about the body? Oh well. How do I 
do I want to go? Does that really, like, how do yeah. I, and yeah. that's part of it. And one, one of the, one of the, the, the performances that these young activists did was with an Andy Warhol of his soup cans, Campbell's soup cans, and they threw some real soup cans at him. I mean, that's, that's even more, and it, oh my god, you shouldn't do this in a museum, we're going to, they're very clear, these are all pieces behind, you know, it's museum glass with cards around, they were very, they're very savvy, they're not breaking anything, they're taking risks for themselves, and for me that is on the continuum of that Vietnamese monk in 1964, you know, what, what, what are we as artists prepared to do as art and or as protecting this from being damaged by somebody who has, you know, a reason to respond to it in some sort of way? It's a juicy conversation. Yes? I, a couple of weeks ago I was at the uh, Mass Mocha, the, the uh, Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art and it's filled with exactly what we're talking about here that um, not so not performance but um, art that makes you think that actually um, is involved uh, that makes you think too and it's it's usually something that is um, Contemporary, obviously it's contemporary art, but uh, one that I can remember was it was this. It was about this size of a, a place in the, in the on the floor, and it was roped off so that you could walk into it. But it was filled with just bowls, and they were all sort of a red lacquer and black on the outside, and they were filled with coins that people would drop in, but. The, the coins and the red and the black were, you know, a piece of art in a sense. But also the coins were representing, um, I think, how much money uh, it takes for students to get through college or something like that. And whatever was dropped in there, they sent to, you know, something, some uh, group that, you know, it, the money would be used to help students, but it, it, we would not think of that as art. Years ago we think of, you know, a painting or something as art, and, but this was an art that had a message that made you think. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Thank you all. I call it carousel one and carousel two. Oh, call, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, if you're going to go, right. this is the thing that's going to happen. Right. 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 Right